Catherine and this is a knitting podcast although I do talk a little bit about other fibery and crafty things as well but mainly this is a knitting podcast. Um, thank you very much for joining me again if you've been here before and thank you so much for finding me if this is your first time watching my podcast. Um, yeah really really warm welcome to everybody. Um, I think I better do a bit of a reintroduction episode, well, a reintroduction part to start this episode, um, because I've had a few questions about uh, who I am and, 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 and so on, so I thought I'd uh, talk about that a bit now. So, as I said, my name's Catherine. I live in Germany. I've lived in Germany for, I think, at least seven years, maybe nearly eight years. I'm not sure. I've lived in Germany for a while. <laughs> And I live here because I was lucky enough to meet the love of my life in uh, South Korea, in Seoul, when I was living there. And uh, yeah, so I moved to Germany uh, to follow my heart. <laughs> um, we live here in a, a small apartment uh, with lovely, lovely neighbours. And I have my little garden. I have my sewing and I have my um, my knitting and all the things that come with that and yeah I'm really really happy living here in uh, in Germany so uh, yeah me my partner our plants and a lot of yarn <laughs> so uh, so yeah that's that's me but also made by Mumino people have asked me where that comes from so um, yeah I love Moomins I don't know if you've ever seen them before they're these little I might put a picture up here actually if it's not copyrighted. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moomins are these little, I don't know, hippo type creatures and uh, they're from a book and comic series by uh, an author called Tove Janssen is I think how you say it correctly. And um, I've just loved them ever since I was a small child. I talked about it I think in a previous episode. And obviously I can't call myself something Moomin because that's a that's a copyrighted term but uh, but I call myself on social media I have done for years Moomino in homage to uh, to Moomins and a, a few years ago so that you could see which was the back and which was the front of my my sweaters um, my partner really kindly had some little labels made for me some little you see that made by Moomino <laughs> Uh, and it just kind of stuck and I thought if I ever start a podcast or anything um, or if I start selling my bits and pieces or if I make anything which I never will do <laughs> I have no aspirations to do that um, yeah I would use the the, the the name made by Mumino so um, yeah that's where that comes from and that's kind of stuck so yes welcome uh, that was me Feel free to tell me about yourself as well. Um, loads of uh, people really kindly commented on my last episode telling me about where they were watching from and uh, some of them what they were knitting on at the moment and thoughts about different patterns and so on. So I'd love to hear about where you are, what you're knitting on and uh, yeah, what was your favourite book as a child? If mine was the Moomin books, I loved them. I also loved Tolkien as well when I was a kid, I really loved it. Um, yeah uh so yeah tell me sorry my mind flitting away <laughs> thinking i really 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 should reread the lord of the rings i haven't read it reread it in a while anyway um yes tell me about your favorite book what was your favorite book when you were a child and has it influenced your making and your crafting in any way so yes for the next sort of half an hour or so uh we'll be talking about some projects some purchases some spinning. So grab yourself a, a beverage. I've got a cup of chamomile tea here. And let's get into it uh, and start with what I'm wearing today. So this is a ranunculus. I think everybody pretty much has made a ranunculus at some point in their knitting life. Um, but this is my one. I've only made the one. And this is, um, I think I made this at the beginning of last year and it is an unspun held with an alpaca so the unspun is uh by wool and twine wool and twine uh is uh, hula she's based in hamburg in the north of germany and uh, she makes beautiful 
thoughtful, ethical yarn. Um, a lot of it she has milled herself, or she, she has arranged for it to be milled for her. Um, she uses natural plant dyes. She's very, very conscious about the, um, the sustainability of her products and um, sort of supporting rare breeds, things like that. She, she does an absolutely incredible job. She sells really, really beautiful things. And for a while, a couple of years ago, she um, uh, did an unspun. Um, I think it was in two different colorways. This it was the rye colorway. I don't think that she does this anymore. I will check. Um, um, oh, that reminds me. Down in the show notes, I link everything that I talk about. If I miss something, just let me know and I'll add it in there. Um, or if you have any questions about anything, please just uh, write down in the comments. Um, and I also put in chapters as well. So if I'm talking about something that's of zero interest to you, just skip on to the next part of whatever that does interest you. Um, as I said before, I promise I won't feel a thing. <laughs> that's why I put them in. Uh, yeah, this is um, the Unspun made by Hula of uh, Wool and Twine. And she has a podcast as well, actually. So every, I think once a quarter, she does a, a, um, a shop update. Might be more often than that. But she often does a, a podcast to talk about that as well, to introduce the new any new bases that she's working with. Um, and yeah, she, she's very thorough in what she does and she sells a really lovely product. Unfortunately, she doesn't sell this unspun at the moment. I don't know if she has any plans to do so in the future, but it's really, really lovely. If you haven't worked with unspun before, I should have brought some as a, um, as a, as a sample for you. Oh, in fact, here we go. Bit of my bad spinning. Unspun kind of looks like that. So it's kind of pre-yarn roving and uh, it doesn't have much or any twist to it. Um, and it's a really interesting uh, material to work with. So it, whilst you can pull it apart very easily, once it's knitted up, the staple length within the yarn itself creates a lot of strength. So you get a very um, dense, very light, very airy fabric. How can something be dense and airy at the same time? It is, it's dense and airy at the same time. <laughs> it's not a hard fabric, but it's there's, there's no holes in it. It's it's a very, um, it's a lovely fabric to work with. Anyway, uh, so this is uh, made with that, but I was quite new to, to knitting with Unspun at the time. So I held it with an alpaca and this one was, I wrote it down earlier. Yeah, this one is Lang Yarns Passione or Pas Passion. Uh, passione, uh, which is an alpaca um, polyamide mix. I think it's 80% alpaca, but it's discontinued. This was colour number 96, um, and it, it was a perfect match for the rye. Um, I'm really, really happy with this. I made this version quite cropped. Um, I intended, to, and I do, wear it over dresses. Uh, today I'm wearing it with a skirt. But, um, but yes, I made the sleeves and the body quite cropped, so it was comfortable to wear when I was doing other things, um, so I didn't get too hot. The downside of the unspun, as you can probably see here, is you lose a little bit of the definition um, of the, the pattern for the ranunculus. But um, I think that might be mostly due to me holding the alpaca with it as well, because the alpaca is very, very dense. I think it, Lang call it a worsted, um but held together it was uh, it was it was a really nice fabric to work with really nice yarns to work with i, I enjoyed making it and uh it knit up really quickly i will make another one at some point so yes that's what i'm wearing okay i don't have any finished objects to show you today zero zilch zip nada <laughs> um i've just been really really busy we have been going here, there and everywhere. Uh, you will have seen in the opening credits a little bit of footage of myself in a yarn shop. So that was a lovely yarn shop that I've visited a couple of times now called Sip and Knit. And that's just outside Brussels. Um, my brother and his wife uh, occasionally travel to Brussels for her work. She's a lecturer and uh, so we, we don't live too far away from Brussels, only about a two hour drive. So um, 
a couple of times now we've gone and met them and we were driving there and my partner said oh when we finished with your brother and and uh, your sister-in-law why don't we go to the yarn shop on the way back and i said nope no, 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 I don't need any more yarn. We've got other plans to go to other yarn shops in the following week. No, we're not going. But then we met up with my brother. Um, my sister-in-law was still teaching at the time. And he said, oh, we were wondering, could you take us to that yarn shop that you went to last time we were in Brussels? Immediately. Yes, of course. No problem. No problem. We will go there. <laughs> so, yeah. I went to uh, I went to a yarn shop and that was the footage from the beginning. So um, the people that you saw in the first part, uh, the, the the man reading the book, that was my brother, my little brother, Charlie. Um, he's 10 years younger than me. I'm the oldest of five and uh, he's the little baby of the family, although he's not much of a baby anymore. <laughs> and the, the, uh, the lovely lady I was with was my uh, sister-in-law, Anjali. And uh, you saw my partner sitting on the, a sofa um towards the end of the clip it's such a lovely yarn shop um there's a little cafe area with sofas and comfy places to sit um and so it's really nice it's a lovely place to hang out uh, for a couple of hours even if you're not a knitter and uh the owner of the shop whose name escapes me oh i'll write it down here if i if i remember it i want to say rachel but it's not rachel Anyway, she has an incredible selection of yarns there, everything from Wool Dreamers to sort of the more big box type yarns, like Lang Yarns and things, which incidentally is local to me. Lang Yarns headquarters is in Korsenbosch, which is not too far away from where I live. Um, I don't think they actually make the yarn there. I think it's actually made in Italy, but, uh, but the headquarters is there. So anyway, I ended up going to a yarn shop. <laughs> but the point of me telling you about that and digressing was I've been really, really busy going here, there and everywhere for the last couple of weeks. So I haven't had a lot of time for um, uh, knitting uh, sort of the quicker projects and things. So this last couple of weeks has been more about mindful, slow making, and that's absolutely fine. And good for me made May as well. So no finished objects. Um, I won't show you my handbag socks. If you've watched previous episodes, you'll know I always keep a hat or a pair of socks to work on in my handbag. Um, they're progressing nicely um, and I'll show you those when they're finished. Whips then, let's move directly on to whips. And they're big whips, um, hence no finished objects. I'm working on two test knits at the moment. Which one shall I show you first? So the first test knit I'm working on, apologies for the folded pattern. I mentioned this in last week's, or last week, in the last episode, in episode seven. This is a test knit for Maxim Sia, and it's a cardigan or jacket version of, um, I think it was the single malt jumper that he released a year or so ago. It's a really nice textured knit as you can see from there. And uh, yeah, this is for my partner. So he picked out some lovely yarn from Croft. And this is the Croft Shetland from West Yorkshire Spinners. And it's in the colorway, what colorway is it in? I wrote it down here, Seafield 339. I don't know if I've done that much on this since I last spoke to you. I took it in the car with me when we were driving to Brussels. So I think I've done a little bit more down the side since I last spoke to you. So as you can see, it's a simple raglan construction. It's got a deliciously squishy folded collar and it's got an all over texture which I'm really, in have I made a mistake there? Oh, I might have made a mistake there. Is my stitch count off? Possibly. Oh, I think I have, you know, I think I've made a mistake there. <gasps> Darn it. I have to go back and fix that. Anyway, so this is what I, yeah, I have, I've made a mistake. Can you see that? Oh no. <laughs> well, that's going to be ripped out by a couple of inches. <laughs> Never mind. 
<laughs> so it's quite a quick knit though because it's on a larger larger needle this is on what size is this uh, a five millimeter needle so a us8 so it's a reasonably quick knit the deadline for this isn't until the 7th of July, I think it is. So I've got a long time to do this and I'm really enjoying the process of just um, quietly knitting away on this. But yeah, I'm really glad I held this up because I don't think I would have seen that just sitting on my lap. I don't think I would have noticed that. So yes, I will rip that back a couple of inches and redo that. I wonder if I've made a mistake or if there's a mistake in the pattern. This is why we do test knits so we can spot things like that. So I will investigate. But the yarn is gorgeous. I'm really enjoying working with this. It's a really squishy, not prickly, um, uh, but still woolly yarn. So if I pulled the, all of the, um, the cable out and everything, I think the stitches would still sit there quite happily. It's a nice toothy yarn that's giving a lot of um, definition to these stitches. So I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah, so... That's a little job for this afternoon. Okay, so whip number two, uh, which is a biggie. So this is what I've been devoting most of my time to over the last couple of weeks. Um, this is the Art Nouveau sweater from Eleanor Mortensen. Eleanor Mortensen is a German designer and she makes absolutely beautiful colour work patterns. Um, they're usually very intricate, uh, quite sort of geometric slash floral and just really, really pretty. And this one, as you can clearly see, has elements of both sort of Art Nouveau and um, there's a floral element to it as well. It's just really, really pretty. Love the, this motif and immediately applied to be a part of this test knit. So um, the designer uses Miss Lamotta Merino's linen. Uh, in singles and this is a South African yarn which is really beautiful if you go and check out the website I'll link it below um, it just looks like a really really lovely yarn and perfect for knitting summer garments um, but this one though and in general for test knits I do try and knit from my stash um, I talked about my process for test knits in a, uh, a couple of episodes ago I think it was episode four or five uh, I like to either use the yarn that the um, designer is using so to help them with the amounts and so on or I like to use a really really different yarn so that the people who are then going to buy the pattern or knit it for themselves can see the variety of different yarns that could potentially be used and have an idea of the amounts and so on that they, they would need for that. So in this instance I was really umming and ahhing on what to use. I had some alpaca in um, in my stash, I had some really nice linen in my stash, I had all sorts of different things but I really wanted to make a woollier jumper. Um, I often wear a jumper as a top layer instead of a jacket um, and I wanted to, something that would, would fit into that in a different colour to what I already had. Um, I had an idea that I was going to try and do a, a, a fade or some kind of um, gradient or a marl or effect in, in the colour work section. Um, but that didn't really work out. I swatched using Woolly Knits as the main colour and John Arban as, um, what was it, Harvest Hues as the uh, the colour work, the, the contrast colour. And it didn't really work. They're not really compatible uh, weight wise. So I just stuck with Woolly Knit all the way through. And I went with this. If you've seen an episode uh, from a mm, couple of months ago, I think, I started to make a cardigan in this colour and it just didn't work out. The yarn wasn't heavy enough and it wasn't toothy enough to, to um, show off the texture in that particular pattern. So I ripped it out and put it away for something else. And this is the something else. So I started off by holding this. Apologies, by the way, if you can hear any external noises, there's garages out the back of um, my uh, my flat here and I just wanted to leave the door open for a bit of fresh air today so apologies for any background noises. Um, yeah so I started off holding this double and then introduced the contrast colour which is this lovely oatmeal colour. 
So it's kind of a warm beigey colour. I made a whole cardigan in this. I made the field cardigan from Rosetta in this and um, I love it. It's such a versatile colour. So I started off by holding those two together and then I thought, you know, I could actually make a little bit of a colour fade in it. So I did about a third of the colour work just in this and then I held this with it because I'm holding these double all the way through. And this is the smoke colourway also from Woolly Knit. Oh, that's a nice way of showing you what it looks like when it gets a bit skinnier on the comb. <laughs> I made uh, a Jaden jumper, I think it was, for my partner. It's a pattern from Isabel Kramer in this a few years ago. So yeah, did the first part of the colour work in this, then held it with this, and then did the last third of the colour work just with this held by itself. And the result is a really, really subtle colour change this up for you. Let's hope I don't find any mistakes on this one as well. <laughs> and this is where we are. I cannot tell you how happy I am with this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Really, really lovely. Um, so the woolly knit is sold as a four ply, uh, you know, fingering weight yarn, but it's really skinny even when it's uh, blocked when it's held singly it's it's much skinnier than a four ply or a fingering weight yarn so I held it double and this creates then quite I mean you can see here it's quite a thick dense fabric it it's so perfect for color work it it's just it's really grippy it's it blocks nicely it blooms just enough to kind of smooth everything out um, I really, I've used this yarn for colour work many times now and I, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, yeah, so that's where we are at the moment. I split for sleeves yesterday. This took me a while. So <laughs> we went to Amsterdam last week. Um, my partner's business goes to a big trade fair there once a year, um, the same time every year. And I often tag along for the ride. And I was trying to knit this on the train. I was trying to focus sitting in the hotel room doing this. I was trying to sit in the hotel lobby and knit on this. It was tough. It was really tough to, to concentrate on uh, on knitting this with so many other things going on and, and the city of Amsterdam sitting outside the hotel calling to me to go and explore. But I did it. So over the last two weeks, this is pretty much all I've been knitting on. Nice and slow and steady and just enjoying the process. I think you can see the colour change there a little bit, going from the oatmeal at the top down into the oatmeal held with smoke and then the smoke just by itself at the bottom. It's gorgeous, really, really pretty. Do you want to see my floats? <laughs> Let's turn it inside out. There's my floats. Oh, I always think it looks just as good as the other side. I love seeing the floats. So um, the designer, Eleanor Mortensen, she recommends doing sort of a farewell technique and holding floats that go for longer than five. And I stuck to that, I think, pretty much. Oh, I love that so much. It's like looking at a negative. It's beautiful. I'm really, really enjoying the process of knitting this. So I think I would class myself as both a process and a product knitter. Sometimes I love having something like the Lento I made, um, I showed you in my last episode. I put some pictures of some film of me on Instagram as well wearing it. I just wanted to enjoy knitting and stockinette and have a really nice comfy jumper to wear at the end of it. But this, it's I just find when I'm making colour work or lace work, I don't think about anything else. I'm just completely focusing on the process of what's going on, um, looking at the pattern and working out, you know, monitoring my tension, all that kind of thing. I just find it so calming and so soothing to knit on. I, I really, really do enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so now we're just on the stockinette bit going round and round in circles. So I can take this on the train with me and be able to concentrate on it fully. So that is the Art Nouveau sweater by Eleanor Mortensen. And that, knitting wise, is pretty much all I've been working on. So very briefly, I'm going to talk to you about spinning and then I'm gonna to talk to you about my little trip to Amsterdam and um, my 
purchases therein. Okay, so I'm back. Let's talk about spinning very, very briefly. Uh, if you watched my last episode, you will know that I uh, gave a small informal workshop in uh, English paper piecing to a few of the lovely women that I spend time with at my local knitting group, at my local knitting shop. And so last Thursday, I took over my fabric stash, freezer paper, quilting bits and pieces, quilters thread, etc, etc, etc. And we did English paper piecing. Um, we used little hexagons and I've set my friends the task of making something about that big in hexagons now that they've got the hang of it and then we'll make something out of that in the next um, few weeks when they're ready. Uh, but it was a little free workshop, nobody paid anything for it, it was just uh, just some friends teaching each other how to do English paper piecing. So in return and I cannot, I can't believe the generosity of people. Uh, the owner of my local yarn shop, Iris, has lent me a spinning wheel. She has lent me an Ashford Kiwi 2 and I have been learning to spin. One of the other women at uh, my knit night, Svenja, she gave me a free spinning lesson and we spent a couple of hours and I get it. I get what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I get the theory, I get the principle, I get the physics of it. However, <laughs> making my hands and my feet do what they need to do in order to achieve that uh, an acceptable outcome is another matter. So um, <laughs> this is my first effort. <laughs> Don't look too closely. Oh no, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> this is my first bobbin of my own spinning. <laughs> Let's call it art yarn, shall we? Oh, that bit there isn't too bad. You see that there? Oh, although, yeah, Svenja might have done that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was last Thursday. And I must admit, I've only picked this up a couple of times since, because I've just been quite busy and we have friends over on the weekend. Oh, it was my partner's birthday last week as well. So, uh, so we, we had lots of friends over on the weekend and things as well, so we've been quite busy. Uh, but yeah, I have picked this up a couple of times. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, this is a horror show. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I will document my spinning journey. I'll take lots of photographs to sort of spur me on. But my life is just a steep learning curve. But the act of spinning itself and the process of it is just so much fun. It's brilliant. It feels like it's a I don't know, it feels like something from a fairy tale or I don't know, something like you're actually making something. I mean, I do lots of baking and obviously I knit and stuff as well, but it feels like an actual process of making something. And it's just, ah, oh, it is. Yeah, I really, really want to become good enough to make something I can actually use. I mean, yeah, OK. Do you know what? I will keep this. I will wind it off onto a toilet roll. I will probably ply it with itself at some point and I, I might even use it for weaving or whatever. It will be used, nothing will be wasted, but it is going to be a steep learning curve. I have no idea what this yarn is called in English. In in German it's called polar fox, which means polar fox. This isn't made of polar fox. I imagine it's some kind of sheep breed that's that's called that. So that is my first attempt at spinning. Svenja was so, so patient with me. First of all, we practiced starting and stopping the wheel, making it go in different directions, what the different bits do, what it feels like when you tighten the brake and everything. So um, this is an Ashford Kiwi 2, as I said, which is Scotch tension, which I believe means that the brake is at the back. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just really enjoying using it. Um, I, Iris has said that it's uh, alone for as long as I want it, but I, yeah, I think I'll be saving up to get my own at some point. I'm looking at the Loyan Travel Buddy or the Loyan Buddy. It's just a, a really nice little um, wheel. It's Irish tension, so the brakes at the front instead. Um, and I just like the idea of being able to take it to and from uh, spinning classes or uh, 
you know, taking out and about with me. My parents, my family live in the UK. I'm originally from Wales. And my partner and I, we do drive back uh, at least once a year for a few weeks over Christmas. Sometimes we drive back in the summer as well. Um, and it would be really nice to be able to take it with me um, nice and easily for that. So um, I like the idea of getting a, a travel wheel or a smaller wheel. But yeah, spinning. So Svenja, who used to work in a, uh, a wool mill, she also gave me a kilo of this. <laughs> She knows I'm going to need to go through a lot of it. I just, I cannot believe the generosity. I'm pretty sure this is a, an undyed um, BFL. And uh, yeah, watch this space. I'm not going to talk about it too often because nobody needs to see me messing up and wasting yarn. But you know what? I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> it's keeping me out of trouble. So um yeah, let me know if you are a spinner or if you've just started spinning or if you have aspirations to spin. If you have any uh, tips or tricks or hints or uh, or anything or, or your horror stories of uh, learning to spin. Also wheel recommendations as well. I mean, I mentioned the Loyan, which is a subsidiary of Louette or uh, from the same family as Louette. Uh, but what wheel did you learn to spin on? I'd love to hear about that as well. Svenja and I was asking her she said she has she had to count how many spinning wheels that she has and one of them is a matchless which as far as I understand it is like the the Ferrari of spinning wheels but but um but yeah what do you spin on if you're a spinner what did you learn to spin on <laughs> it's just incredible that you can take something like that and make it into a usable well in theory usable product so yeah that's my spinning so far early days. <laughs> okay. Um, and finally, well, well not and finally, but uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the yarn shops in Amsterdam. So as I said, um, my partner and I go there for work every year and I get to mooch about and uh, explore the yarn shops a little bit. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit that, about that and about my, my purchases. So the first stop for most people when they go to Amsterdam is, of course, Stephen and Penelope, which is a lovely yarn shop. And I'll put in a whole load of footage at the end of this. And if you please, if you're not interested, it was lovely. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me for a little bit of yarny chat. And uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you for, for joining me. But if you are interested in this, stick around. <laughs> Um, yes, so the first port of call was Stephen and Penelope and uh, it's a lovely yarn shop. There's a great selection of art yarns there, some more um, commercial yarns, uh, lovely uh, notions and bags and bits and pieces. It is pricey though. It is pricey. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's pricey. <laughs> but I did, I did buy a little something there. Excuse me. So my partner likes to come with me when we go to Stephen and Penelope. And usually he chooses something for himself and I make him a hat or I choose a couple of skeins and make a shawl for myself. And this year I really did push the boat out and I bought two skeins of La Bienna May. Really beautiful. This is Merino Super Sock and it's 425 meters per 100 gram. It is 75% superwash merino and 90, sorry, 95, 25% nylon. That was where the nylon was coming from. And the colorway is called Hegelia. And it's a really very pretty, I'd almost call that a duck egg blue, really pretty dusty blue color. goes really nicely with what I'm wearing actually. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to be. I'm going to tuck it away and one day it will speak to me and say, Catherine, I want to be a shawl, probably. <laughs> but it's really pretty. It's very soft. It's very squishy. It's very rounded. It's very, very pretty yarn. So I bought that there. 
And as I said, there'll be footage of the different yarn shops that I went to at the end of this, if you're interested. Okay, the second yarn shop that I went to was a new one for me. Um, I decided to do a little bit of exploring. If you're ever in Amsterdam, I totally recommend getting a, a travel card. You can get them uh, at the train station or when you're on the trams themselves. And you can get a sort of a 12 hour, 24 hour, whatever. I got a 72 hour travel card, so I thought I'd make use of it. And I went to a new to me shop called Hooks and Yarn. As the name suggests, it's um, uh, very welcoming to crocheters and they sell lots of lovely things for, uh, for crocheting with. And uh, I had a lovely time there. So the owner of the shop was a lady, or is a lady, called Sandra, and she is an incredible crocheter. She had these beautiful crochets and blankets um, lurking in corners around her shop. They were just absolutely stunning. I don't crochet. I really should learn to crochet at some point, but right now I don't. But it was really inspiring to see. Um, she also makes her own patterns. I'll link her Ravelry down below. I'm not sure if she's made any recently, but, but the things that she showed me they were just so beautiful. They were so artistic. It wasn't your standard, not that there's anything wrong with it, granny square blankets. Um, it was really kind of lots of different motifs and applique and additions after the fact. It was just really, really gorgeous. So I'll link her Ravelry down below so you can have a look. Her shop had um, some really interesting yarns. They had uh, some hand dyed and some indie yarns, but also some of the big box yarns, uh, lots of things with acrylic in it. Now, I always like to have some acrylic based stuff in my stash. One of my sisters is really allergic to anything with um, animal fibre in it, any animal fibre at all. And she has two kids that I love to knit for. I don't have any kids myself. Um, I really enjoy knitting things for children and my nieces and nephews do get a lot of knitted things. <laughs> Um, but because my sister is going to be washing and caring for those items, probably, um, I can't knit anything with wool. Although she said it's fine to do it a bit and she'll just be careful when she's touching it. But I don't want her to have to deal with that. So I took the opportunity to pick up some bits and pieces to put in my stash that will probably become hats or scarves and things at some point for my nieces and nephews. Um, my other sister who lives in California, she's got three boys and I do, I don't think I've actually knit anything for them before. I mean, they live in California. <laughs> it gets quite hot there. But um, yeah, they, they live in Northern California near San Francisco in Marin County. Um, and I don't think there's a heck of a lot of call for, for knit weather. <laughs> But if I do knit her things, it will, again, it will be in acrylic so it can get chucked in the washing machine. Um, with three boys, I'm sure she's got enough to worry about uh, without uh, <laughs> without uh, thinking about having to hand wash uh, stuff that her sister has foisted upon her. Anyway, so when I was in Hooks and Yarn, I had a good old mooch around and I bought this. This is a Dutch brand called Sheepiers. And... This is so soft. It's incredibly soft. It's 78% cotton, 22% acrylic, and it's coming out as 130 meters per 50 grams. So I suppose a sport weight. It's incredibly soft. It's beautiful. Um, I don't know what this is going to be. Maybe a hat, maybe a cowl, maybe a scarf. Could even technically, I suppose, be a pair of socks. We shall see, but I've got 100 grams of that and uh, I'm sure it'll be something for one of my non-wool uh, non fibre family members at some point or for a, for a child's uh, project at, at some point. But that's so pretty. It's lovely pinks and pale greens and greys and things in there. I'm sure that's going to knit up really, really nicely. Kind of makes me think about ice cream for some reason. Mmm, raspberry ripple ice cream. <laughs> So yeah, that's that. While I was there, I also picked up this. So this is uh, Regia, Regia. I believe this is German. Yeah, Schachenmeyer. 
um, and this is one of their non-wool fibres, uh, non-wool yarns, and I cannot see the makeup on here. Cotton, cotton, cotton. Where is it? Yeah. So this is uh, Regia uh, Sock Wool, the Zockenwolle, and it's 72% cotton, 18% polyamide, and 10% polyester. I think Ali on Little Drops of Wonderful, I think that she might have used this exact yarn to make some socks for herself. Um, and as you can see, this colourway is inspired by Kiwi. Oh, I should have said what colourway this was. This is called Malachite Meadow. So this is Malachite Meadow and this is colourway 902. Mm, really pretty. Anyway, so this is Kiwi. I've lost it where it says again. Colour 02418. <laughs> That's really cute. That might even become a muscle bra. We shall see. It's very silky feeling. It's very soft, very silky feeling. I do like it. And the lovely Sandra, I don't know if you can see that. She gave me a little ladybird stitch marker to go with it as well. She was so sweet. We chatted for ages about different patterns and different yarn shops and things. She was a lovely, lovely lady. I do recommend going to Hooks and Yarn if you have, if you're in Amsterdam. So it was a, it was a lovely experience, and I enjoyed the way that she displayed the yarns on the walls as well. So yes, cotton sock yarn, Regia. Don't know what that's going to be yet. Tucked away for one of my nieces and nephews at some point, I imagine. So that's that. The other thing that I got when I was there was some Istex. She, um, the, the owner of the shop, uh, she had a little sample knitted, a little beret, and um, Istex is things like, uh, we normally use like Plutolope and, and that kind of yarn. And honestly, it's, it's, it's very rustic. I find the Plutolope and things is quite stringy. It's quite, um, I knit with it quite happily. I'm not sure I'd want to wear it next to the skin for myself, my partner, definitely not. But she had some of this. I want to say Shbunny. It's a brilliant name. <laughs> it's so soft. It's really soft. I mean, it's almost got a sheen to it soft. It's really, really, really nice. Um, this is uh, from Istex and it is a DK weight. So 100 grams is 190 meters and it's 100% merino wool. It's coming up a bit browner on screen than it is in real life. It's got a bit more blue in it in real life. Um, but this is colourway 7229. And it's just really, really squishy. I don't know what this is going to be. She had three balls of it left. And I think um, Sandra, the owner, wanted to get rid of it. So she very kindly made me a little discount on that. It was very spontaneous. I went in there to buy things for gift knitting because it's getting to that time of year when I'm starting to panic about making hats and stuff for my family for Christmas. Um, but yeah, I saw this. This I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be something. 300 grams is enough to make a slipover for myself. Is there a Stockholm slipover from Petite Knit? I don't know. We shall see. But this is being tucked away and I will look forward to using this. Um, yeah, I was really surprised at this. I would definitely look forward to seeing how this knits up, how it washes, and maybe getting some more of it because it wasn't, the price point was pretty good. It was uh, not bad at all. So that was that. <clears throat> okay, so I went to three yarn shops altogether, and the third was also in the centre, and it's called the Afstap. Uh, the Afstap, sorry. And the owner is a lady called Hanukkah and she was lovely as well. And we had a really nice chat again. She sells um, predominantly yarn, a very nice selection. So um, she sells all the Marie Wallen British breeds. Um, she also sells a really nice selection of different uh, uh, British yarns like um, JC Rennie and uh, I think she had Jameson's in there as well. Um, lots of nice Shetland uh, and British yarns, very 
good for colour work. Um, and there was so many colour work samples of, of, around the shop. Um, it's really inspiring. If that's your thing, doing colour work, it's definitely a good shop to visit because you have the full palette there. Also, uh, for somebody like me who doesn't live in the UK, you see all of these yarns um, advertised out and about and people using JC Rennie and, and things. It's nice to be able to touch them in person and having now squished some, some of it, I would definitely, definitely buy some uh, in the future for, for future um, colour work projects. She also sells um, a Dutch brand called Volmed Verva. <clears throat> I apologise for my pronunciation. My default is German. <laughs> any Dutch people watching please tell me how to pronounce it properly also it's my understanding that verva means like art or, 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 or art history something like that so I think it means something like wool with art and uh, it's a lovely company that makes small batches of hand dyed yarn on uh, merino superwash bases and I saw this I couldn't resist how pretty is that so that's the uh, Volmet Verva. And this is a little bouquet of minis. These colours are my colours. Oh, they're just so gorgeous. It's 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon. There's five minis in here, each of which are 20 grams and 73.5 uh, metres per 20 grams. So that is, yeah, okay, so that's a normal um, sock four ply. But yeah, this is made and dyed in the Netherlands and it's so soft, it's gorgeous. I've met with this a couple of times before. Last time I was in De Afstap, I purchased the same brand, but a merino single and I made a, a, a little shawlette for my mum for her birthday. Uh, I think that was last year actually, so yeah. I picked that up for myself. I don't know what it's going to be. I might tuck it away for the autumn and make myself the nicest pairs of socks you've ever seen in your life and do a bit of colour work. It could become part of a yoke. I still haven't knitted Jennifer Steingar's pattern and I'm thinking that would make a gorgeous yoke in one of her sweaters. <sighs> but I buy, I see these things and at the, in that moment, I can't resist purchasing it and bringing it home with me. And it joins, um, it'll join lots of lovely little friends here in my stash until it becomes something beautiful at some point in the future. So yeah, that's what I bought there. I also bought, <clears throat> uh, these are available online as well. I didn't need to get them there, but some Addy Trios. I've started, so in the past, I blah, 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 start again. I learned to knit socks using DPNs and then I moved on to the Chow Gu shorties for, for making them. But what I find is if I'm going on an airplane or if I'm going on a longer trip, you need to take lots of bits and pieces with you. So if you're using the Chow Gu's, the shorties, you need to take DPNs with you to do the toe. Um, that kind of thing. I, I've tried knitting on Magic Loop. It's not really my thing. I don't enjoy it. But this for me is a perfect solution. As you can see, the stitches are divided evenly between two needles and then you um, knit with this third needle, which means that it doesn't matter how big the circumference is and you don't need to remember to take DPNs or anything with you to finish off projects. So I knit a lot of hats, especially for gifts. Um, and I was thinking these would be absolutely perfect to um, take on the train or whatever with me to, uh, to, to, to knit hats with, particularly muscle bras. I, I think I'll probably knit quite a few for people for Christmas this year. Um, yeah. So if you haven't seen these, I definitely recommend giving them a go. They do come in a metal version as well, <clears throat> but I like to go for the bamboo. Normally I knit with metal needles, so all my chow goosenings are all net metal. But when I'm travelling by plane, I like to take bamboo because there's just fewer questions are asked. <laughs> so these are my go-to for, for travelling. And uh, yeah, that's that. Um, the last purchase I made, I'll 
skirt over very, very quickly. This was when I was in Brussels a couple of weeks ago in the footage you saw right at the beginning. And the last time I was there, I bought a beautiful skein of French yarn um, by Lane Amoure, and it was this. And when I went back, the same two skeins that I'd walked away from before, the last time I was there, were still there. So they had to come home with me to join the other skein I have. So now I have three skeins of this. The makeup of this is 50% um, baby alpaca, 25% silk and 25% linen. And I now have 300 grams of it, um, so 1200 meters, which is ample for making a summer t-shirt, which is what this will become once I've finished one of my test knits. Um, I already have plans to make the home camisole from Cairdry. Um, I'm not 100% sure which t-shirt, which summer top this is going to become. Um, I was thinking perhaps I did a test knit for Sari Nordland last summer and um, she very generously gifted all of her testers a free pattern at the end of the test knit. And I think it was the Kuta tea that I uh, I asked for. I'll put a picture of it up here. So I was thinking I might make that, but I'm not 100% sure if the, um, the gauge is, is gonna be okay for this particular yarn. If not, there's a few other options. I test knit the salt kraken tea for her last year and um, that's a round yoke construction and the original was made in stripes. Again, I'll pop a little picture up here for you. Um, but I think it would look lovely plain as well. So I think I might just make myself a plain round yoke. We shall see. I'll have a think about it. I have a hankering to do some lace. So um, I'll have a little think about it and uh, let you know how I get on. But that's not going to be any time soon. Oh, it's just so drapey and gorgeous. But that's going to become a little t-shirt. Okay. Um, yes, that is pretty much it for today. I think I'll leave it there. Um, so yeah, sadly no finished objects. Lots of yarn purchases. There will be no more yarn purchases for the foreseeable future. I am shopped out. <laughs> It just happens like that sometimes. I did a few trips in quick succession, but I'm going to be quiet now for the next few months with more time at home um, so I can get on with actually knitting some of the things that have come into come into my stash rather than just accruing. <laughs> There's a, um, yeah, I've got a few things on my radar that I'd like to knit, a few different uh, summer tees. I think I'll take a little break from doing test knits after these two and concentrate on getting my... Uh, Getting some things for other people knit up. I think that would be a, a good use of my time. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Um, in the next section, I'm going to put some footage in of the different yarn shops. Um, please enjoy the footage and um, yeah, happy making and I'll see you in a few weeks time. Bye. <laughs>